I walked 10,000 steps every day for a month. I did it without dieting. I ate whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. I did it without any exercise. Well, besides the walking, of course, if you count that as exercise. And I did it with a toddler by my side. All the time. Help. Somebody save me. Somebody get me out of here. I need chocolate. I need time to myself. So the question is, why did I choose to do this? Well, because whenever I went up the stairs, I panted like a wildebeest with asthma, being chased by a lion, like this video of you relate. Because my stomach looked like I was four months pregnant, after pictures to come. Because I think I might be turning into a vampire, and I need sunlight to prove to my family that I'm still human. Nevertheless, I needed to make a change, and this seemed like an easy one. Well, easy it was not. Well, first of all, I know you guys all want to know if I lost weight or not, and the answer is, Yes, I did. How much weight I lost in before and after pictures will be revealed later in the video. But I will tell you that my starting weight was 144 pounds and I am five foot four. Yes, I'm short. Blame my mother. So while walking 10,000 steps a day for 30 days, I decided to vlog every day of it, which I will share in next week's video. I'm gonna link it right up here once it's up. But in this video today, I'm gonna tell you the four things that have changed during this time of walking 10,000 steps a day and the 10 things that I learned. So the first thing that changed is I started sleeping like a baby. Mm, no. I've had a baby. They don't sleep good. I slept like a koala bear. Google says they sleep good. At first, my sleep was compromised because I wouldn't get my steps in in time, so I'd have to walk in circles at 10 o'clock at night, and so I wouldn't get to sleep till later. Oh, and I drove my husband crazy because he'd be trying to settle down at night, and I would be making him and the cat very anxious by walking back and forth repeatedly. As shown in this video, yeah, she hates me. And everybody loves them some good old science, so, Dr. Carson from Harvard Medical School said, Is that British or Southern? Is this even science? Going for a brisk daily walk won't just trim you down. It will also keep you up less often at night and exercise boosts the effect of natural sleep hormones such as melatonin. Downside to this is I started hitting the snooze button a lot more than I used to, but totally worth it, right? Who doesn't love sleep? Except elephants. Did you know they only sleep two hours a day? So on to the second thing that changed is that I was surprisingly less hungry and less likely to reach for sugary foods. I am a sugar addict. It all started 10 years ago when I started working at an ice cream shop and it all went down from there. Well, I am just shocked by how much walking suppressed my appetite for the things I normally crave like Reese's Cups, Reese's Puffs, Reese's Trucks which I would totally sneak into. Do they exist? Instead, I found myself eating lunch and then not having this dire need to have chocolate after, which is very unusual. I still did enjoy Reese's and ice cream and sugary cereal, but the cravings for it definitely decreased. Let's take time to look at the science now, AKA Google. That's my kind of science. Aaron Polinsky Wade, nutrition and fitness expert said, it appears that aerobic exercise such as walking has a larger impact on suppressing appetite than non-aerobic exercise such as weightlifting. In addition, walking may help your body to better process appetite hormones, allowing you to feel less hungry throughout the day and to feel fuller sooner when eating. It's like everything I'm saying is being backed up by experts. I mean, that makes me an expert. So apparently walking is more effective in suppressing your appetite than weightlifting. Good to know. I'll have to decrease my intense weight training. The third thing that changed is that walking made me feel more energized throughout the day, which really surprised me because I figured it would take my energy away and that I would go for a walk and then I would be on the couch the remainder of the day eating a bowl of marshmallows. But instead, walking made me activate my inner ticker. And I was actually able to get more done each day. I mean, the first few days were harder because my body was in shock from the sudden movement that it was not used to. What are you doing? <laughs> it's time to deactivate Tigger and activate my inner Dexter. Let's see what Google says. Healthline.com sounds reliable. Going for a walk when you're tired may be a more effective energy boost than grabbing a cup of coffee. Walking increases oxygen flow through the body. It can also increase levels of cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine. I want to talk to the guy who created these words, not cool. Those are the hormones that help elevate energy levels. Very important hormones, I suppose, should have very fancy names that you can't pronounce. So when you're tired, abandon the coffee and go for a walk, but there's no way I'm giving up my coffee, so try both at the same time. The fourth thing that changed is I lost weight! 
I know this is the point of the video you've been waiting for. I was really worried because I didn't feel like I was losing weight. I mean, I still had to suck in to put my pants on. And I was still eating ice cream and potato chips, so boy, was I surprised when I stepped on the scale one month later and it said, I lost three pounds. But what's even more surprising are these pictures. I look like I went from four months pregnant to two months pregnant. And I'm not pregnant at all, for those of you wondering. But I did have a baby, which makes it difficult to get rid of this flab right here, so. But I'm not sure if any amount of walking could get rid of that. I don't even feel skinnier, but the proof is in the pudding. And I don't even know what that saying means, but my pudding has shrunk and that's proof, so. Let's move on to the 10 things that I learned by doing this challenge. And I'm just gonna rattle them off one by one. Walking in circles around your house is not fun. So get outside. Yet it does get the job done. Walking around in circles at night will annoy the people you live with. Dancing is a good way to get steps in. Grocery shopping does not give you as many steps as you'd think it would. Dishes don't benefit me at all in the walking department, but you still gotta do them. Walking with other people is nice, and it makes the experience a lot less painful. I wish I had a dog. I wish I had a babysitter so I could walk without a stubborn toddler. I wish I had Oreos and a glass of milk because that sounds freaking amazing. I'm so hungry because I stopped walking. And you should always set Google reminders to remind you to put your watch on in the morning. <laughs> And lastly, you should click on this video where I documented every single day of my journey of walking 10,000 steps a day for 30 days. So you can actually join me in the experience. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys soon.